This is Humility and Unapologetic Podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to Humility and Unapologetic Podcast. And today is Child Care Protection with Terry Ratcliffe. Terry Ratcliffe is a social service member and today she's going to share her wisdom with us on getting our kids on the right path and what to do with those who kind of strayed away a little bit but as always it's good to have you yes glad to be here (laughs) and just a quick synopsis a quick bio terry is my baby sister whom i love dearly and i appreciate you being on today yes thank you for inviting me you're welcome well today is uh, we're, we're going to get started off with talking about mental health because it is a, a prominent thing that people it gets looked it gets looked over a lot man that is it's something that we should address instead of just saying all oh, that child is bad or all oh, that t- child is acting up mm-hmm. and there's a reason behind a child acting out or being disobedient and stuff sometimes yes. it's something with the mental but i'm going to kick it over to terry and let her explain a little bit about that about the mental health aspect of it. Okay. Well, again, like my brother said, my name is Terry Ratcliffe. Um, I work for, I work in a a behavior health and mental health um, facility. Um, And we work with family and children who, um, who have an open CPS case. And a lot of the time, some of the children in the home um, battle with the mental health. Um, And Mental health is very important in it. Oftentimes the children who suffer from mental health, they have like uh, environmental issues, living in impoverished areas, um, stress, um, just different things um, that leads up to those behavior issues that you may see a lot of kids displaying. But um, the, the mental health aspect, it affects how we think, feel, and act. And how we think, feel, and act um, determines the outcome and the consequences that that you know children deal with, and so um, you may uh, be a child may be approached with a situation um, to where they're being bullied all the time mm-hmm. um, based on you know their uh, socioeconomic status and stuff, and so they come to school they may um, look dirty or nasty and they're constantly being uh, picked on all the time mm-hmm. and layers and layers of trauma build on that from that child being picked on all the time and um it it causes mental health issues and so how that child thinks from them being picked on will determine how they will act to a situation and then that's how they will react to the situation and and oftentimes it leads to them becoming juvenile delinquents Mm-hmm. It oftentimes leads to them, you know, being repeated offenders mm-hmm. because they don't have anyone in their home. They don't have that parent that just um, can provide them that safety, that secure, that structure within that home environment to show them a better way of life. Mm-hmm. And it can be violence, uh, substance abuse, um, alcohol, just different things um, that kind of lead up to children um, and people having a uh, mental health issues but it starts with the child yeah. so so the term product of your environment that's a very true term oh yeah yeah so that that plays a lot into a child's behavior issues and their mental state is they they react off what they see absolutely and that causes them to act out and uh some people you know let's say label them bad but they're just basically misunderstood yeah but the proper help like as you like you know, as yourself and others, mm-hmm. you know, then you can help them, steer them on the right path. Right. You know, because yeah. we, we don't want to leave no child behind, as they say. That's right. So for, for the kids who are acting out or who's feeling like lost or not getting the time or attention at the house like they should, what, what's like a safe haven for uh, misbehaved kids? Um, There are different programs. There are different entities out there. Um that a child, especially counseling, counseling is like the number one thing that a child can receive to kind of help cope with those different mental health issues and those behavior issues that they're having. Um, And it can be family counseling, you know, eventually leading up to family counseling, but individual counseling is like the number one thing to kind of help that child be able to release 
some of those things, those, some of those behavior issues that they're experiencing. And, um, but you know, they have programs like Big Brother, Big Sister programs. Um, if a child run away from home, there are still safe play sites out there for those particular children. There are shelters and stuff um, because we still have a high number of children that run away from home on a daily basis. Oh, and so there are different places out there for a child to go to. There are also um, hospitalization if a child has experienced that, but that's for the more intensive children. Um, and you wanna kinda try to avoid and, and have the, the parent to step in and have put resources in place mm -hmm. before it even gets to that point mm -hmm. um, for them to have to be hospitalized because a lot of the stuff can be handled within the home. Yeah, and that, that's kinda like the best way to deal with a troubled child mm -hmm. is to see, uh, get them help, uh, seek some type of advice from a counselor or whatever, and uh, so, so what are some of the safe, like safe places that you can? Uh, um, you can just uh, example well, about one or two. Some of the safe places, um, when they're in school, actually your your counselor's office. Um, a lot of people don't like to deal with the police department, but the police department is also another safe place for um, children to go to to just to seek um, that help. Um, that cry for help. Um, it's not too many places here in Hattiesburg locally. You pretty much got to go outside of the area um, up north and kind of like in the Jackson area. But um, those are just like some of the places. Um, the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. um, just different places that are, are around here. Um, Pondo Little Health sometimes have some things that that they can do, that they do some activities they do. And then of course, uh, Canopy Children's Solutions have um, have counseling, have uh, therapy and stuff that children can interact in and, and be a part of to kind of help them deal with it again, deal with the issues that they're experiencing. But myself, the job that I do on a daily, daily basis is in-home services. And what we do, we educate the parents. Mm -hmm on how to first recognize the behavior that the children are experiencing. Gotcha. And, um, and once we do that, we teach the, the, the parents on how to become um, a more active parent. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, because it starts in the home, mm -hmm. right? And then they say it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. But if, so sometimes, but like, like we said on the episode back when we had Fred on, you don't, you don't see that as much now as far as the neighbors, mm -hmm. like if a child get out of line, how the neighbors can correct them and stuff like that without the parents yeah. getting angry or whatever. But, you know, sometimes the parents are not in the mental state, mm -hmm. you know, themselves. So, so the parents, when parents that need assistance, mm -hmm. who can they go to? Um, most of the time, the parents are dealing with um, underlying issues of their own, mm -hmm. like drug abuse, yeah. uh, alcohol abuse, and they have, um, most churches have alcohol anonymous programs that they can go to. They have narcotics anonymous that, uh, programs that they can go to on a weekly basis wow. to kind of help them cope and deal with those things. Most churches? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mount Olive, um, Venture, mm -hmm. is, is different places um, here locally that parents go to for those AA and NA meetings. Um, and that's just surrounding themselves with support uh, groups um, like those or just having those friends that they can kind of um, call on that is not doing the same thing that they're doing, oh, you know, and yeah. kind of keep them away from those drugs. So you got to, the parents will have to change their environment. Exactly, yeah, because kid, kids are sponges mm -hmm. and, and they mimic whatever they see, Yes. you know. So if they, like, I give an example all the time, kids that listen to music, they kind of tend to do those things. Mm -hmm. So when they see their parents acting out or saying uh, curse words all the time and yes. that, that's part of their vocabulary. So whenever they get around other people, mm -hmm. then it's kind of what you're gonna expect, you know? So yes. it's, it starts with the parents and I'm not saying that the parents are bad necessarily, but, and sometimes they need help mm -hmm. because, because they're dealing with their own demons and mm -hmm. they're battling their own demons. So it's, it's, it's good to know that local churches are, are doing that. I, yes. I, I had no clue that they were doing that. Yes. Yeah, so. It's, it's, it's a ton of places. It's just about um, staying involved in the community, 
staying involved with, um, again, like-minded individuals um, that is going to see more positive, not the negative, but the more positive aspect of life. And, um, and with that, they have parenting classes. Again, like I teach parenting classes within my program, but not everybody, but I'm through CPS. And not everybody has an open CPS case. For the ones who don't have an open CPS case, there are still different places that provide active parenting um, courses uh -huh. for you. Um, and so I think that's the root of it. Just uh, a lot of parents don't know how to be that parent mm -hmm. because they were never taught how to be that parent or right. they didn't have an example. Absolutely. And so it started from their childhood. Yeah. And so it's a lot of generational stuff right. that's reoccurring and causing um, um, children to act out because that's what their parents did. Yeah. And so um, just kind of learning um, learning what those behaviors are, um, quality time. And if the, if the child is not a, getting that quality time in, that's an important factor. You got to yeah. set aside time as a parent for to be involved in that child's life right. so they can see that you're there you're there to protect them provide security provide love mm -hmm. make sure that all their basic needs are being met Absolutely. and if those basic needs aren't being met then you're dropping the ball mm -hmm. and so that oftentimes leads to it and you find a lot of children out here stealing turning to other things such as violence mm -hmm. gangs and stuff to just seek that attention that they're not getting inside of the home. Mm -hmm. And those are a lot of factors that build up to that mental health. Yeah, yeah, because it, it doesn't always take money to spend time with kids. Yeah, yeah all you got to do is just recognize that they're in the room, mm -hmm. interact with them, ask them how their day going, much like a relationship. Yes. Yeah, with a, with a child, you're building a relationship, mm -hmm. a relationship that lasts forever. Mm -hmm. and. You, you have control over which way that relationship goes. Absolutely. If you show them tough love or, or too hard on them, yeah. they might turn to, you know, some other type of guidance because kids just want to be loved. Mm -hmm. They're innocent. You know, they didn't ask to be in this world. Mm -mm. And uh, once they arrive, then it's on us as parents to make sure that they're taken care of. Yes. Yeah, and we have to uh, maybe just acknowledge that fact. And so you, you tend to see a lot of that within the school systems. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a high dropout rate in a certain school area, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, compared to a different uh, school district or whatever, right. you know, because, and I'm not saying that the way that certain people raise their kids is wrong mm -hmm. or whatever, but it's just, we we can do better yeah. sometimes as, as people, yeah. as, a, as a black, people but but that's just a stigma not all black people are bad no. not all not all black fathers are absent right correct. you know so you know it's just on us to take care of our kids and went over and i and i talk to this guy all the time uh, i'm sure he don't mind me mentioning his name there tim and um and we talk about all the time i you know it start with the youth because yeah. when they reach adolescent age you know when they're teenagers their mind's kind of made up and, yes. and it's kind of hard to draw them back in. Absolutely. So, so we, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, it's yeah. dark. And you know, because a child's brain is not fully developed into age 25. Oh, wow. It's not. So they have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And if you're not teaching them all the important things they need to know before they turn 25, they lose it. Yeah. They lose it. That's for everybody. Mm -hmm. They lose it. And so it's your job as a parent to shape and mold that child starting from birth yeah. mm -hmm. to who they become. Right. And again, thinking about yourself and reflecting on your own self as a parent and say, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. What am I showing that child? Right. The reason why they feel the need to act out yeah. and do these things. So you have to sometimes as a parent do self-reflection. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And you have to have your self care, but you also have to have that self reflection because a lot of times, um, in one of uh, in the parenting classes that I teach, um, there's a video where a child was trying to get the mom's attention, and the mom was ignoring the child. Mm -hmm. And then when the mom came back and asked the child something, the child was ignoring the mom but he was just mimicking what he's seen the mom do. Oh, and sometimes we can say, oh, that child is being disrespectful, mm -hmm. but we can also be disrespectful as parents. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that we're like, we're the parent. And so what I say goes, 
and that's it. But you taught that child that. That's right. Yeah. And now you see it as disrespectful because they're doing it to you, but you did it to them. Absolutely. And so sometimes we have to just self reflect mm -hmm. and think about, okay, where did this where is the child learning it from? Mm -hmm. And you gotta give that child that attention. Mm -hmm. It's very important to set aside that time. Yeah. And another and thing, too, we, we have to encourage our children yes. to be uh, more than a conqueror, pretty yes. much, uh, that you can go out and be that doctor and don't shoot down their dream. Yes. Like like me and Pastor Melvin King said on the last episode, you have to speak uh, life, life mm -hmm. into your children, yes. and not only yourself, but your kids as well. Tell them you can be that doctor, yes. you can be that astronaut, yes. it is not out the question. You can be that lawyer, you know, mm -hmm. you can be that politician. You can be the next president of, of, of America, the United States. So that's important for us to yeah. to instill that in our kids and tell them that you're great. Yes. Speak that over their life every day. Like Pastor King said, you know, you already got an adversary that's speaking bad about you and mm -hmm. your family and wants to see you fail. So it's important for us as parents to speak that over our kids. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and if they are suffering with a few mental health, I, I learned from the elders all the time, don't call that kid slow because the more you say it, the more they'll start believing it. You said it. Yeah. Whatever you speak into your child is who they will become. Mm -hmm. And that's how children end up doing all these things because they you're tearing them down with your words. Right. You got to build that character mm -hmm. in them through positive affirmations speaking positive words into them and not pushing them to do things that you know are too hard for them to do mm -hmm. that's another thing i know yeah accept the child for who they are and what they can do that's important because if you don't they're going to become something that they don't want to be and they're going to struggle with that and it's going to come out in the long run right mm -hmm. because they're not satisfied they're only doing what you are pressuring them to do yeah and so don't push your child too hard um, and, you know, don't make them be something that they're not because um, just build that bond. Absolutely. And when you build that bond with your child, it's easier for that child to come and talk to you. I know. That's important, too. Yes, mm -hmm. they can come talk to you. You're able to pick up on certain cues, certain body languages, right, right. Um, the nonverbals, yeah. all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. When you have that relationship with your child. But if you and then when the child come and talk to you. Be an active listener. Right. You mm -hmm. got to be an active listener. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not an active listener, they're not going to want to come back and talk to you. Right. And that's when stuff starts building, building inside because they held it inside. Mm -hmm. They can't go and talk to their friends at school because they're embarrassed. Yeah. They, can't, they don't want to go and talk to friends in the neighborhood because they're embarrassed. And they feel like at home should be the security. And it should be. Yeah. And they should be able to come and talk to you as a parent. Mm -hmm. But if you're shutting them down and you're like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't believe you. Or you're not really being an active listener and paying attention to what they're saying. Most of the time, children are crying out for help. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. And we shut them down because we're too busy trying to be on social media. <laughs> we give all our time to social media. Yeah. And so our children are falling below the wayside. Mm-hmm. And, and these mental health issues can be, um, they can be avoided. That's right. Because a lot of them is from the environment, mm -hmm. from the relationship that they have, and it's from just um, opportunities. Yeah. And outside influences. Outside influences. Yeah. All of that stuff. Yeah. Because you, you got, you got just certain rappers nowadays that the kids kind of cling to and what I guess growing up mm -hmm. you know you had different things like we had I had Larry Dickens of the Boys and Girls Club and I saw the positive things he was doing so that kind of encouraged me to do positive Uncle mm -hmm. Roosevelt you know yeah. saw how he was a family man and he put his kids first that made me want to be like that yeah. our brother Fred how he yeah. raised his kids you know and that you know I had positive people mm -hmm. even though Pops died, you know, when we were way younger, but I had positive male role models. Mm -hmm. And that's important, too, to have a male role yes. model for these young men yes. that are growing up, for them to see someone doing something positive and, and for them to try to follow in their footsteps and not go down the wrong path. And you say, yes. where did I go wrong? So, yeah, that's important. So people uh, wanting to get into social services, what, what's your advice for it? Can it be a strenuous occupation? Um, you just have to have a love for children and serving others. 
Um, I feel that, you know, it may not be for everybody, but if God placed it on your heart to do, if you have that joy for serving others, even if you, you're serving your church already, you're already on the right path. Um, but you don't necessarily have to serve in your church. Um, to just have that love and that passion for wanting to help people who can't help themselves or feel like they can't help themselves. And you got to have the mindset because it, it does take a lot. It takes a lot to go in the homes, deal with these families who have nothing, who um, other people may think is less than them. You got to have the mindset. You, gotta, you can't be biased. You got to be able to shift your way of thinking um, to be in the social service field. But again, just having that love and that passion for wanting to help someone, help someone become the best person that they can be, helping families be reunited, helping families stay together so that CPS and child protection, so that child protection services is not removing kids from the home, um, but are reunifying them. And that is what child protection services does, because a lot of people, I think, Think of, uh, oh, CPS is a bad, bad place because they always taking kids from the home. But their their number one reason is the welfare of the child. Mm. And so when you come in this field, you got to think about the welfare of the child. And, they're, and, they, and CPS strive to reunify families. So don't just think, oh, they just want to remove kids from the home. No, their goal is to reunify the families. Mm. They want to see them together. And so, and that has to be your goal. Your, your goal has to be, what resources can I help with this family um, to make sure that they have the best and have all their needs met so they can take care of their children. Right. And so that they can have a great outcome, a, a great future. And so just having that love and passion for it because um, it can, you can get burnt out, but even if you get to those burnout days, you gotta think about the reason why you wanted to be in this field in the first place. Absolutely. And make a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. So there you have it. For those seeking advice to be in the social services, you know, be dedicated, put your heart in it, and strive for the best. Well, I appreciate you being on. Oh uh, yeah, before I go, I want to say happy birthday to my co-host, Mr. T, <laughs> my nephew birthday. T. And uh, like I said, this has been Child Care Protection with Terry Ratcliffe, and I hope that you learned something yes. and that you can take it and instill it and for someone, even if it's just one or two people, if you learn something from it, then it, it, it bless my soul. So until next time. <laughs>